Hi, um, this is a quick video. Um, I just want to talk about the paperwork for coming to Spain. Because I'm going to put a guide together for all this stuff. Um, I'll be honest with you, after uh, having to deal with NIE, Padron, um, going self-employed, registering the kids at the hospital, registering the kids at school, going for residency, uh, getting residency for my non-EU spouse, um, I might even go for the EEA family uh, visa later. It's a lot um, of paperwork and the, the problem I'm having is when I talk to people, most people don't actually know. Um, they've heard third hand, fourth hand, fifth hand or whatever. Um, even for simple things like fishing permits, the fishing permit is only about 20 euros, I think about 18 to 20 euros. but. Um, I know somebody paid 40 euros because they paid 20 euros for it and 20 euros for somebody else to do it for them. Uh, Padron, 70 euros people are charging, 50, 70 euros to do it for you. NIE, I got quoted up to 110 euros, uh, sorry, more than that, 150 euros. Registering the kids at school, 100 euros each. Um, and then you start looking at self-employment, that's about 200 euros as well, about 180 plus. And pretty much all this paperwork you can do yourself. Which is, well, I'm going to put a few guys together. And the reason I'm not doing it all in one is it's all confusing. Um, because if you're doing this social security, for example, where you just want to make voluntary contributions or you just want to to register for your social security number being actually going to make any contributions. They're very different to somebody who's going self-employed that needs a uh, self-employment uh, tied with their contributions. Um, because, for example, retirees, uh, pensioners, they already don't need a lot of this stuff because they're already past pen and <laughs> they're getting money out, they're not putting it in. So there's a lot of stuff that you don't need and there's a lot of stuff you do need. So I'm going to split them down into boxes um, and simplify it. One of the things, for example, getting residency here, it, you may not need um, to do the NIE process in the same way. Because NIEs are normally for things like you're owning property here, but you're not living here. Um, it's an alien registration number where that goes on at EX16, I think, the, the name of the form. I'll have to double check that one. But if you're going for residency and getting your NIE, uh, which is for somebody that's actually going to be a resident, that's EX18. Um, if it's a non-EU citizen, uh, non-EU person registering for NIE, it's EX15. That's what I'm talking about. It's quite complicated. And if I put it all in one book, you're going to have 70% of the stuff you don't need and 30% you're going to be confused whether it's right or not. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do a book on, a uh, simple one on NIE and residency, another one on setting a business up, um, another one on non-EU spouses because there seems to be a significant amount of people that actually need um, to go through that process. And also what about property um, for buying property in Spain because that only needs an NIE but there's other things that you need to bear in mind and things like bank accounts for standing orders and things for your your water and that sort of stuff. So there's lots of little books um, but I put them all in one so it'll be confusing. But I just wanted to share that with you because today is a bit of a frustrating day because I'm um, going through some paperwork today and I got one of these forms that I need to take to the next process for something else, but this single form can actually be used for two things. So I'm just waiting to find out exactly which document I need um, to associate with. Um, very simple thing, but it's literally got multiple choice and I only need one of the three and I'm not 100% sure which one is one of the three, but I will do by the end of today. And that's why a lot of this stuff is very tedious, very boring, um, time consuming, 
but I'm going through this process myself, which is why these books will be a lifeline for some people, and other time other people is going to save them a couple of weeks of trying to run around, trying to find out if they got this form, that form, what do I need to do, because all the forms will be available, um, so you can download, fill them in, and just take them into the offices. There's no, how do I ask for this form, where do I get it from, because um, some of this stuff I've already done, I've actually gone in, got the forms, brought it home, scanned it, filled it in, took it back myself, where you'll just have to fill it in and take it in one trip. So make life a lot easier for everybody. Uh, now, <laughs> if I was going to be doing this again, I'll be honest with you, I would have probably have come out and got this paperwork sooner. At the same time, even now, I'm going through this process of sorting it all out so it's structured. I'm finding a lot of people just do not know. Um, even with some of the stuff that's actual legal documentation, different people have had different things happen, depending on which offices they've gone to. Um, it reminds me so much of the Philippines, because you could have a specific legal requirement in one office, which isn't actually legal anywhere else. Um, or you can have one office that just doesn't bother with most of the documentation and just takes the basics when they're supposed to take all the legal documentation. It's all uh, all over the place. But as long as these documents that you get out of the guides are structured in the way I'm doing it, you've got exactly what is the legal requirement. You've got um, everything you should need, uh, everything they will ask for, but on top of that, if they ask for anything extra, it's not actually something that's legally required. And it's very likely, when they say, see, you've got everything there anyway, they're not going to bother. Um, it's only if something changes between uh, now and when the guides are updated, because we'll keep on top of that as well. But I tell you now, for I'm not going to charge a fortune for these things, but I know it's going to save you a small fortune if you're going to get other people to do it. But we're also going to do some of the stuff for you if you want it done, and if you want to contact us for any help, we'll we'll also do that as well. Um, we're 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 here long term, so we're going to be part and parcel of finding out how everything works, and also learning a bit of Spanish for myself. So if you do need a translator, that sort of thing, we'll we'll be involved in very soon as well. Um, my wife's already halfway there. Um, because she's from the Philippines, and for a lot of people that aren't aware, um, the Philippines was a former Spanish colony. As such, most people in the Philippines have a crossover with Spanish, because there's, there's a lot of words in the Philippine dialects which have crossed over into the Filipino languages. Um, because if you look at Cebuano, which is where my wife, uh, it's called, Bisaya or Cebuano, um, that dialect, when you break it down, you'll find there's a lot of words that are missing. Uh, and this is why you end up with these crossovers. For example, I don't think the word toothpaste exists. That's why the word Colgate gets used a lot, um, which is obviously a brand. But that that's the sort of thing that happens. So if you say uh, there's no word for bread because they didn't have bread before, um, they probably, probably did, I, I don't have that historical information with me right now, uh, but they might have introduced Pam, you know, this is the sort of thing because they'd have picked it up off the Spanish for what they called it for, um, and then they end up with it in the language. So you've got this uh, blend of sub, uh, Subuano and Spanish, which ends up into modern, uh, modern Subuano uh, after been under Spanish rule for over 300 years. So my wife's picking up Spanish extremely quickly. Um, it's a bit frustrating for me because obviously I, I'm struggling to get get to grips with it. My wife's already like getting up to conversation. Well, she's in conversational level. She's already talking to guys at the shop. She's talking to people at the market. And I'm still putting words and phrases together. <laughs> um, but anyway, thanks for watching. and. If you need any help, we're here. Okay, thanks.